right what is going on you guys it's your boy white album here welcome back to some more Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass moon last time we actually ended up getting a bad ending which is pretty sick it was pretty sick we you know after we left arcway and her lonesome we way we, we try to go back home game said no that's wrong <laughs> and uh shiki ended up getting turned into charcoal because of that uh if you don't know what i'm talking about that was in my last video go watch that if you haven't or if you just managed to stumble upon this video, I do have a whole playlist uh, set. I don't know how I would do that. Either play, uh, I, well, I just have a playlist, let's just say. So if you're looking for that, head on to my channel. I do have a playlist that says Tsukihime. It'll have part one to this current part, which would be part 10. But yeah, man, the, the boy got turned into, he got turned into charcoal, man. Okay, we were so close to the mansion. Yeah, and uh, it was pretty cool because we also got like a somewhat of a clip show i guess you could call that or a slideshow i don't know but it was called teach me miss cl and it's basically saying hey dumbass yeah fucked up that's not how you're supposed to do that this is how we're going to give you the answers on how not to get this ending again but here we go enough blabbering man let's get into it i did save i did save oh actually it starts me off from right here perfect okay all right, last time we picked number one, which was, I've had enough of this madness, I'm leaving. Um, and after that, we kind of went to a park, and they actually gave us two options of going back to the mansion or going back to the hotel. And basically saying, you know, if you pick one, basically pick two. So we're going to make it easy. I'm just going to pick number one from right here. So here we go. The woman told me to be her shield, but uh, I'm done hesitating. I'll stay. I'm staying put. All right, so we're going to pick That's that. So stay in here. Well, I did make a promise. That's right, I did. No matter what happens, I don't intend to break my promises. Arkaway is still asleep. I honestly can't tell by looking at her, but she did say she was weakened. She even said she was at her limit earlier, but the real question is whether I should stay or leave. I didn't even have the chance to think on it before. No, we're staying. We don't want the we don't want another bad ending on our hands. I mean, it's what I'm going for because I want to get everything within the route, within both the routes, routes, however you want to say it. Hmm. It's quiet in here. We're the only two people in this room. Hell, on this entire floor, even. Though I'll save wondering. I'll save what. I'll save wondering if it's rude to count self-proclaimed vampires as people for later. <laughs> You idiot. You don't even know which side it'd be rude to. I scold myself. After being chased the entire morning, my body's too tired to move properly. Even thinking is exhausting. Well, I guess I should try to relax first. I tear myself away from the door to sit down. The chair I choose is a tall one, adjacent to the mini bar. I find a bottle of mineral wa of mi what? mineral water inside and pour myself a glass. That's like 35 bucks right there, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, much better. The cool water unravels my scrambled thoughts. The wild chain of events this morning had clogged my mind, keeping me from thinking clearly. I should take this chance to carefully decide on my next move. Yeah, seriously? It's my second resigned exclamation of the day. The one before was directed at Arcoade, but this time it's aimed squarely at myself. The sound of her gentle breathing brushes against my ears, pulling my focus away. What is wrong with me? What am I doing? Getting all excited and worked up over her at, the, at a time like this. Look, it's how you're written, big dog. <laughs> oh, I need to leave the room. This must be because of the fear that gripped me in the alley still hasn't let me go. Well, hold on. Let me reread that because I fucking... <clears throat> this must be because the fear that gripped me in the alleyway still hasn't let me go. There we go. That that sounds more cohesive in my head. <laughs> I read that. I was like, hmm. I stumbled through that one very hard. You can't tell, but I, I was just like, what? I just need to take a deep breath in the hallway and I'll be fine. The strange heat in my chest will go away. We're gonna wetting our whistle. I'm gonna wet mine. 
Ah, we really did book the entire floor, huh? There's not a single other guest or staff wandering the top floor. Arcoid is currently sleeping in the corner in the corner room at the end of the hallway. We had a clear view of whatever would come our way, but it also means we're uh, much further from the elevators. So you have a gakko. Ah, shit. I totally forgot about school. It's a little past 11 a.m., and I doubtlessly already been marked as absent. It'd be a lot of trouble if the school caused a mansion, but there's a little I can do to prevent that. <laughs> Aki is definitely going to have a thing or two to say about the uh, thing or two to say about this, but this isn't the time to worry about that. <laughs> I may be a little late, but I guess I should text Arahiko. I don't feel good, so I'm skipping. Make up some excuse for me if you can. I set him a loose reason for my absence and hope that he'll raise, uh, he'll rise to my call for help. I'm not begging him to work any miracles, just hoping he can figure something out if the opportunity presents itself. If only I could tell him more about what's happening. Yeah, yeah. No way. He just called mental asylum on me. There's no way to explain the situation without sounding like a lunatic. Arahiko doesn't need to know more uh, more than this. Sate. Well then. Thinking of a familiar face calmed me down a little. It's time for me to return to the room where the self-proclaimed vampire slumbers. I'm back. I knew she'd still be asleep, but it felt weird to enter the room without a word. The woman in white is sleeping just like she was when I left. It's like she barely moved. She doesn't look the slightest bit threatening in her sleep. If I didn't know any better, I'd say she looked like the princess of some foreign country. Hmm. Well, <laughs> if only you knew, right? I avoided the sofa long enough. Even though I know I might not get back up again, I take a seat. After all, the sofa is the only place in the room that has a good overview of both the bed and the door. It's just as ridiculously comfortable as I anticipated. Its fluffy cushions call to me. I feel like I might just melt into them, but I stop myself. I'm supposed to stay on guard, so I can't fall asleep now. Is she sleeping with her arms behind her back while laying on her back? You know how fucking uncomfortable that must be? Even from here, she's almost nightmarishly beautiful. Her smooth pale skin, her slender fingers, each one piece of fine art, the soft curves of her body. Every last detail of her body is without equal, and when put together, the composition is flawless. I've never seen a figure so sublime. No, that's not right. In all my life, I thought I'd never see one. <sighs> see what? I let a long sighs and look up at the ceiling. For all that talk about being a vampire and coming back from the dead, Arcoid is a living creature, one that looks and talks just like a human. And the fact that she's too weak to even get up on her own is my fault, or is all my fault. <laughs> Hmm. I need to take responsibility for my actions. I think back to when I was taught in my younger days. Or to what I was taught in my younger days. It was Master who told me. Because my eyes are unusual, they may attract other unusual things. Well, to be fair, I don't think Arcoway was looking for you, my big man. Uh, you just happened to uh, do something very horrifying to her, but you know. <laughs> And she just so happened to be someone who can come back from that, so. Call about shit luck there, and <laughs> It's about time for me to pull myself together. For now, I need to keep my promise. Tonight, at least. I'll protect her in whatever way, uh, in whatever way I... Can? I guess? I guess he, he dozed off. White. 
I open my eyes to the color white. The color pulls an old memory from the recesses of my mind. Or recesses. Recesses, recesses. I'm pretty sure it's recesses. A hot summer day. Huge fluffy clouds cover the blue sky. The air shimmers with heat. And the keening of cicadas eats at me. The cries of the cicadas. My hands are glistening with red liquid, as if they were dipped in paint. Screech, screech, screech. Screech, screech. Oh, I'm not reading all that. <laughs> Cicada husks are scattered around. It feels as if the beating sun is right on top of us. What the hell's with this creepy ass, like, choir music? You hear this shit? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hold on, I accidentally fucking bumped my, what's it called, to a hundred, and I did not want that to destroy my eardrums. Burning, sizzling, scorching the clearing. A hot midsummer day. It's as if the world has warped into one massive frying pan. Mmm. We got young Akia and we got young Cheeky. Okay. What the hell is the context of this fucking photo? Sob, sob, sob. Crying. Akia is crying. Akia, who's always following me, or after me, is weeping into her hands. A child is on the ground next to her. The sunlight plays over my slick, wet hands. Yes, my hands are cold. The other child is cold. The red blood painting our world is warm. So is that him or is that some random fucking child that accidentally killed? Cheeky. The adults are here. The other child is dead. Oh shit. What? The adults are yelling. They scream, asking whether I killed him. A dream forgotten, even within a dream. What the fuck? What's the context of that? What the hell? I'll have to go into more detail about that. What the hell? So, okay, this is obviously like way, way before his accident. Even though Akia looked a little older there. Um. Huh. What the fuck? I'm sorry, my mind's like a little. My mom's trying to like wrap my head around that real quick, so I guess him and Aki were playing with another child, I guess, of the family, I'm assuming. And then obviously some accident happened, but that fucking kid was obliterated. <laughs> huh, okay. Interesting. What a what a weird dream that was. Obviously that was after or before the accident, so. Hey, Shiki, wake up. The sun's gone down already. My body is violently shaken from its slumber. A cold hand grips my shoulder as an unfamiliar voice calls out to me. Arkawade stands in front of me. The world outside the window is dark. When I glance at the clock, I realize it's already past eight. Huh? Not the most reliable, are you? I told you to wake me up at sunset, but look who's sleeping instead. Yeah, sorry. I must have dozed off. I'm such a mess. I think I'd fall asleep while watching over her. Hmm. You make a pretty poor bodyguard. It's like, well, I didn't ask for this position. <laughs> if someone had attacked us while we we're both conked out, we'd both be dead right now, you know. Well, I mean, you have the benefit of, you know, 
returning from the dead cheeky not so much i mean to be fair you're kind of weak power wise so i don't think you would be i think you'd be permanently dead so. look i said i was sorry didn't you say we were basically safe during the daytime anyway I said that vampires I said vampires aren't active then. We still could have been attacked by familiars like the ones you saw this morning. Arcoid is mad. Of course, she has every right to be. A guard who falls asleep during his watch is no more useful than a scarecrow. And hey, did you forget I'm a vampire, Shiki? He's like, well, you can walk during the day. I don't, I don't think the other guy can. So how come you can sleep next to me like it's nothing? I mean, would it kill you to be a little bit more scared for your life? He's like, look, I've got a lot of shit on my plate right now, and this is just one of them. <laughs> I take back my apology. She seems more upset at the fact that I wasn't too terrified to fall asleep near her than my failure as a guard. I finally reclaimed enough strength to move, only to wake up and find you sleeping like a baby. You look so defenseless. It's, on, it's honestly making me wonder if I'm lacking in vampiric grandeur. Or grandeur. Hold on. If I'm defenseless, then I'd say the same goes for you. You're the one asking her own murderer to guard her while she sleeps like a little princess. How much you think I wouldn't have done it again? You shouldn't underestimate me just because I'm human. I bite back at her, like a trapped mouse squeaking at cat. It's just uh, it really just a bitter attempt to save face, and yet... Arcoid falls silent, apparently just having realized she's rooming with her murderer. Huh. I suppose you're right. For some reason, I guess I started trusting you completely after a little talk. Yeah, that's all. That's all on you, little lady. That's that's all on you. That's not on Shiki. Well, it's not like she has any bad intentions. So, 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 well, if you trust me that much, I'll just have to help you out the best I can. You want me to just keep a lookout? That's right. Just until the sun rises again. I won't be leaving the room, so I need you to guard me against anyone who comes to this floor. Easier said than done. If anything like that, if anything like that panther shows up again, I'm not sure I'd be able to do, uh, what I'd be able to do about it. You have a knife, and you have a you have a special pair of eyes, man. Do it. <laughs> you did it the first time again, not willingly, but you did it the first time. Well, technically, the first time you realized it, you kind of did it willingly. That was when he was a kid in the hospital. I'm way out of my league here. I can't exactly do my job as a bodyguard without knowing what I'm up against first. Might be just, uh, it might be best if I continue where we left off last time. Panthers and burning zombies aside, I still know pretty much nothing about Arcoid and who she's hunting. I need to confirm something, Arcoid. Were those things that came after us in the alley sent by your enemy? Well, they were more than just patrolling the area. Those ones are tasked with keeping an eye on certain, certain paths around the city. 
A few of them spotted us talking uh, while we were uh, while they were what uh, damn while they were patrolling while they were patrolling damn but why am I struggling here and now they know I'm here they you mean your target exactly if I were in better shape getting spotted would actually save me a ton of trouble but I think but as things are I could get taken out and not for dinner <laughs> Well, technically, the person, yeah, well, <laughs> technically, the one who's looking for her, yeah. <laughs> she would be the dinner. We'll get to that when we get to that character. Uh, that's why we fled here. If we were attacked again before I fully recovered, it'd be real bad. Arkowitz's enemy is a serial killer that's been terrorizing this town. Another vampire. From the sound of it, the vampire's after Arkowitz as well. But they don't seem to be on the same plane, uh, the same level playing field right now. Arkowit is still extremely weak. So the other vampire has lackeys acting as its eyes and ears, and you have no one? Arkowit pouts and pulls her shoulder up in a huff. She isn't refuting it. That must mean she's really, she really is alone. Well, I guess that makes it easier for me. You were talking about how there were a bunch of different types of vampires earlier. Is this the same thing? Like, are we dealing with a vamp with a type of vampire that has a bunch of followers? Hmm. I wonder if there's a simple way of explaining it. Arkwaite's eyes wander over the ceiling as she thinks. It doesn't feel like she's that used to this conversation. Or used to conversation. It's fine. You can give me the complicated explanation. Just tell me what it, well, whatever you can. I might not be able to follow everything, but I'll try and make sense of it one way or another. You sure? Hmm. Thanks, Shiki. Yeah, yeah. No need to thank me. Just let me know what's going on. Arkway nods earnestly. She just pulls out a fucking whiteboard. So, there are a few types of vampires that convert a lot of followers. The one that's taken residence in the city is a particularly old type called a dead apostle. Oh, fuck. She actually fucking did pull out the fucking... <laughs> she actually pulled out the whiteboard. I was just joking when I said that. She actually did. I read that as loser, not lesser. That's that's in, that's insane, bro. I actually I was just joking when I said that she actually pulled out the fucking uh she actually pulled out the fucking whiteboard. That's 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 awesome. All right. <laughs> oh, that's I love it. That was great. I was man, I called that yet I wasn't expecting it. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let me regain my composure. <clears throat> Or as the church sometimes calls them, calls them a Casti Castellan? Cast yeah, Castellan? I'm pretty sure that's how you say that. We got, what is that? Uh, Roman numeral for the number six. Dead Apostles. Parentheses. Lesser. Holy Autonomous can create children from humans by drinking... Oh. These custodians will invade a town or village and slowly spread their influence. All right, so here we go. Fully autonomous can create children from humans by drinking their blood or otherwise corrupting them. Okay. Children? Oh. Let's look at the first stage of their invasion. Let's 
They seek out strong, suitable victims, suck their blood, and turn them into servants. So we got five nightmares, four nightkin, three undead. Uh, when a person has their blood sucked and uh, sucked and dies, they return it to the Castellan's puppet, but they still retain the personality of uh, they had while uh, while human. Okay. Basically, they're the type that still retains their personality. For a dead apostle, this type, the undead, make good uh, make for good high-level familiars. Right off the bat, there's a bunch of stuff I don't understand. But at least my mind's feeling a lot clearer after the na after that nap. I'm just gonna skip past all the terminology I didn't understand and go straight to the few words I did. <laughs> I just love that. Where the fuck did she get that fucking whiteboard from? I love it. I, I again, I just wasn't expecting her. I said it as a joke, but she just she actually did it. <laughs> so, these undead, the ones that still possesses their original personality, they're vampire. They're vampires that were originally human. At rank three, I'm not sure I call them vampires yet. Physically, they're superior to humans, but they're still more like worker ant leaders who can't create offspring on their own. So, three undead, intelligent enough to disguise themselves by mimicking human behavior. Brains uh, reconstructed post mortem. Elite infantry. <laughs> So what about those things we met in the alley? Ghouls. Ah, those would actually be one rank beneath the undead. We call them ghouls. They can no longer mimic human behavior. They're just pawns that carry out orders. Two ghouls. Possess free will but lack higher cog uh, cognition. Rank and file infantry. Okay. Getting a little carried away with her explanation, Arcoid has gone and outlined different types of vampires on the board. And then finally, number one, zombies. Blindly follow their master's orders, absent of any will of their own, requires minimal effort to create cannon fodder. Okay, so it's zombies, ghouls. Undead, Nightkin, Nightmares, then Dead Apostle. And I guess technically her, which would be a true ancestor. She's technically the, the top of the food chain when it comes to the uh, vampire kind. She's surprisingly multi-talented. Once the Castellan has converted enough people into their servants, they'll arrange a coffin to slumber within. They do this since they can't be active during the day, and any type of vampiric activity will draw will just draw more attention. As such, gathering food and expanding influence is left to their servants. Okay, so that's what happened to that chick that we saw last time where she was like in the because if you remember that urban myth of like the the like the I guess the little gang, I guess you want to call them. I'm assuming they're actually servants of the vampire that we have yet to that's yet to be revealed. And he they're basically saying, hey, if you go because if you remember the urban myth that said that if you go into I, I want to say urban myth, but it's more of like a if you manage to go through this entire like abandoned like what was it, like a train station trainway or something like that. If you get to the end, you basically get a prize and then, you know, it's like supposedly like money or something like that. So obviously people are going to be drawn to that. But like, oh, it's just nothing will happen. We're going to just get a nice little prize at the end. But it turns out, hey, no, you're actually being led to your death. And that's exactly what happened to 
that couple that we or i guess the uh the chick that we saw the girl basically she was running away from the vampire she got burned alive and then her blood sucked um so that's exactly that's that whole point of like hey if you're don't go over there and if you do if you're curious don't do it okay if you ever heard of the term curiosity kills a cat that's exactly what's going to happen to you though she still hasn't explained what nightmares and nightkin are uh, hopefully she'll get to that soon the servants from rank 3 and above can mimic humans well enough to prey on them effectively. Some of the human flesh and blood they gather is consumed by the servants themselves as a source of sustenance, but well, uh, uh, most will be passed onto the Castellan. The Castellan slumbers in their coffin, accumulating power, and uh, until they have converted the entire community into their own fl uh, flesh and blood. That's the type of vampire we're dealing with in the city right now. As things are, they don't have a lot of servants yet, so they're not that powerful. But as more humans fall victim, the Castellan's power will continue to grow exponentially. Ideally, one would snuff out the location of the vampire's coffin and take them out before it even comes to that, but I haven't pinpointed their whereabouts yet. They've hidden themselves pretty darn well this time. I can't sense even the slightest trace. If only I could figure out where they were sleeping, this would be a whole lot easier. Without any clues though, all I've been able to do is wander the town during daylight to investigate. And then at which point some crazy slasher jumped at me and killed me. So that was a bit of a pain. <laughs> Arkawade claps her hands together and punctuates her sentence with a bright smile. The four-eyed slash will watch out. Why she give him a bowl cut? She, she gave him a bowl cut. Damn. Uh-huh. That's me she's talking about. I swallow uncomfortably. <laughs> I see. I think I'm starting to get the picture. She's like, really? He's like, no. <laughs> A terrible monster that preys on humans has built its nest in this town, and you've come here to get rid of it. But, but while you were searching for its hideout, I, uh, killed you. So now you're weak, and you have to hide until you recover, right? Yep, that's basically it. Then, on to my next question. Why is this vampire making everything so complicated? Couldn't they just do everything by themselves? Why bother with all the servants? Hmm, that's simply because they're weak. No matter how powerful they are, or how much life force they possess, vampires like that can't survive alone. When you have, a, when you have as many weaknesses as they do, standing out for too long is a ticket to an early grave. That's 
言ってしまうとリスク回避ね。That's why they turn themselves. What? That's why they turn humans into familiars and have them collect blood in their stead. Humans may be weaker, but they also possess fewer weaknesses of their own. It's essentially a matter of reducing risk for them. So wait, if okay, how does that work? Do they get turned into a basically a thrall? So they hunt. Obviously, they hunt. How do they get the blood to the to the to the other vampire? Did they just be like, okay, this guy is okay. We hypnotize this guy here. There, boom, there he is for you. You you can eat him, and the vampire eats him. Or is it like, or it's like a tick type of thing where they, they 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 themselves they just gorge on so much blood that when they return back to their master, their master's like, okay, you're done for, and just just sucks up their blood from them instead, right? That would be. The latter would be kind of fucking gross. I hopefully it's like the first. I hopefully it's the it's the it's the former and not the latter. <laughs> that would be insane. So vampires have a lot of weaknesses, huh? Like what exactly? Well, there's sunlight. And the risk of their magical energy running dry, but their biggest weaknesses are their biggest biggest weakness. What if she just said garlic? If she says garlic here, I I'm done. I'm ending the video right now. Okay, Ooh, I was about to say. First she pulled out the whiteboard, now she's gonna say garlic. That's insane. Uh, but their biggest weakness is probably that they have a lot of enemies. A lot of enemies, like you, you mean? No, besides me. I'm a bit of an exception anyway. Ooh. That's a pretty looking cathedral. Castle, whatever you want to say. As you might imagine, humans aren't the biggest fan of vampires, and humanity's greatest assets are your numbers and your ability to band together, right? Oh, the church. That's okay. That's who she's mentioning. It would make sense. All the crosses that are on, <laughs> that are adorning the top of the uh, the top of the the roofs there. I should have realized. Oh, it's a, well, I did say cathedral, right? So, kind of the same thing. I'm assuming. There are humans whose sole purpose in life is to search for reports of vampiric incidents. Track down the culprits and slay them. The church serving a religion in Western Europe is especially vicious about the whole thing. Their hunters call themselves executioners. No. Executors. I don't know why it's executioners. Executors. That, 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 that don't, uh, executioners, it's the same shit, right? And they claim they're carrying out the Lord's will. Lord, God, my blade, as I strike down these undead heathens. <laughs> They've had centuries to hone their skills in killing dead apostles. Honestly, they're more troubled than some of the vampires themselves. So that's why vampires conceal themselves at first. They can't hunt for blood if they're if they have to risk being sealed away、uh, by the church. Well, I'm pretty sure it's more like being slaughtered by the church than being sealed. Hunters sent out by a church. Sounds like the Inquisitions and witch hunts of the Middle Ages. They must be incredible specialists to make even vampires hide and cower in fear. But something still has me scratching my head. You said these vampires hide themselves at first. Do you mean that once they've gathered enough blood, they don't need to hide anymore? That's right. Hiding becomes pointless once they're strong enough. Yeah, 
If a vampire is successful, then it'll be too late by the time the church executors arrive. It'll be use. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll be using the assets it's accumulated to rule the town with an iron fist. So, the then, once it's finished devouring the town, it'll can uh, it'll move on to find a new hunting ground. If humans want to eliminate a vampire, need to do so before it becomes an issue. Any later, and the city is too far gone to save. I'm sorry, Shiki, but your city has already got quite a few servants prowling around on the vampire's behalf. Humans alone won't be able to fix it. Arkawaite's explanation is a little hard for me to swallow. I mean, I understand what she's trying to say, but understanding and accepting are two different are uh, two very different things. She just can't tell me that my town is beyond saving and expect me to nod along like, okay, sure. Though, the problem feels much more fundamental here. Yeah, can't believe it. Now, come on. You still think I'm trying to fool you? Yeah, so Janayo. No, I believe you're telling the truth. You don't seem like the type to lie. The type to lie. Obviously. What would be the point of lying here? So it's not that I don't believe what you're saying. It's just I can't wrap my head around all this vampire stuff. We keep saying vampire this, vampire that, but none of it feels real. I mean, look at you. I know you're not human. That much is obvious to me. But it's not like you actually feel like a vampire either whenever we talk. Hmm. I guess I can understand that. I must be pretty far removed from your pre-existing notions of vampires. Yeah. You could say that again. I never even believed vampires were real, let alone that they might be like, well, this. And honestly, I don't really understand what's supposed to set you apart from the other type of vampire. I finally managed to figure out what's been bothering me. I can't continue this conversation without understanding what different, uh, differentiate differentiates her from the other vampires. It would be wrong of me to trust her without a good reason. If anything, it's entirely possible that she even possesses an even uh, that she possesses an even bigger threat than this Castellan. Am I saying that right? Oh. I suppose it would make sense for a human to think that way. If you'd never heard of either, you'd have no way of knowing which one of us is more of a threat. No problem. That just calls for some supplementary lessons. Step yourself in for Vampire 101. Arkway proudly holds up a finger. Sure, sure. And what would that be? You're completely new to the world of vampires, so we have to go back to basics. Teach you the stuff even a kitten will know. 
Ergo, Vampire 101. Don't you worry, Shiki. I'm an excellent teacher. Teacher? That's when. Gotta admit, it feels a little condescending for uh, for her to explain this to me like I was some kind of kid. Well, to her, technically, you are a kid, so... <sighs> okay. Yeah, technically, you are in her eyes, so... Ah, uh, fine. Just keep it short, please. Leave it to me. I'll do whatever I can. I'm not sure if I feel all that ready to leave it to her. Like I observed before, Arcoid really doesn't seem that used to conversing with others. I guess a, a self-proclaimed vampire doesn't get too many chances to talk to humans. Glancing at the clock, I notice a little uh, before midnight. I'm kind of shocked that so much time has passed already. But luckily for us, we've got plenty of time to kill. Well, oh, you better hope your sister's in a good state of mind, big dog, because it's not going to be good for you when you get home. It is not going to be a good sign for you, man. Past curfew, past sunset, past curfew, it's 12 o'clock in the morning without knowing where your brother is in sight. I, ooh, she's about to go mental. <laughs> and I'm here for her. I can't wait to see that. Hopefully they actually show that off, but here we go. Let's start by classifying the main type of vampire. The term vampire gets thrown around a lot, but you can actually split them into two main branches. There are those who were born vampires and those that weren't. Natural born used to be. The former are called true ancestors, and the latter dead apostles. Okay, hold on. They had me like reading like this, but I realized that because the way they wrote it in Japanese, it would actually be downward, not like a cross, like how it would be for you know us Americans, us Western folk. So I'm just like, why the hell is she writing like this? But I realized that if you read it in, you know, Japanese text, it's it's correct. <laughs> You're supposed to read it down like that. Not like, you know, I have to like twist my neck to the side here. All right, we got natural born vampires, which are true ancestors. She put little sparkles there. And then used to be vampires, which are called dead apostles, or used to be human, I should say. Dead apostles, and they have a little sweat mark against it. Uh, two characteristics that, oh. All the different ranks I mentioned earlier are essentially a taxonomy system for dead apostles. They drink human blood, turn others into servants, are weak to sunlight, and will retreat when faced with a baptism. That would make sense. You're an abomination against God, so you're just like, don't, don't, don't hit me with that. They, they melt when they get hit with holy water. So how does that work for dead apostles? Or, uh, true answer, they get hit with holy water like, ooh, that's nice. <laughs> just to be extra clear, our, hu or our human, our enemy is also a dead apostle. So two characteristics, they drink blood and are weak to sunlight. I can't help but notice that at some point, her enemy has become our enemy. <laughs> but I guess that's how it is for now, so I decided to let it pass. You said these dead apostles weren't always vampires. What's that about? Okay, hold on before we continue. So. They drink people's blood? No real weakness exists naturally. Super strong. And they have little rabbit. What is drink people's blood? Oh god. Is there a difference between human and people? <laughs> There's like an apostrophe where people's is. So what does that mean? Dead apostles are those who used to be human. Animals or anything that wasn't already a vampire really. This can include those that become immortal as a result of magecraft, or those who had their blood sucked and were turned into a vampire servant. 
Agecraft. Interesting. So you don't even need to be a bloodsucker in order to become a dead apostle. You could just do that through straight magecraft. Huh, wasn't that what Toko was looking for back in Holy Night? Wasn't if I remember correctly, wasn't she trying to like I don't know I don't know if it was immortality or she was like looking I, I think she was just trying to send a godhood or some weird shit like that, but essentially that would involve immortality. So wait, would that mean that Bayo Beowulf would be considered a dead apostle even though he's a werewolf and he's technically immortal? Would that would that count as that? Now that I'm thinking about it? Okay, but we'll worry about that later. In the end, it doesn't matter how they got there. The result remains the same. Unnatural. Those who become vampires obtain a flawed yet immortal body. Either way, they're no longer human. You're scary. <laughs> Is that the little, uh, was it? The Chappies from uh, Bleach? You know, the Rukia's little... A rabbit drawing, the, the chappy. <laughs> so we've got true ancestors, which are natural born vampires, as well as dead apostles, which are humans who turn into vampires. I can't quite put my finger on it. Something about the story seems, still seems fundamentally off to me. Hey, Shiki, how much do you know about a vampire's abilities? Ah, just the standard stuff. They drink the blood of virgins, they can paralyze you with the just a glare, which actually happened to him, sort of. They can turn into mist and wolves too. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be bats. I don't think I don't, I don't I think it's supposed to be a bat, not a wolf. Uh, I think. Uh, basically, all the vampire stuff you usually hear about. Well, all that's more or less true. Vampirism. That apostle. Apostle. The blood of those who have yet to exchange fluids with another person is better suited for supplementing vampires' genetic material. Essentially, virgin blood is more nutritious. <laughs> exchange fluids is insane to say when you think about that. Oh, <laughs> what a gr- Ew. <laughs> Alright. Alright. <laughs> Remember, dead apostles, those who weren't always vampires, have a flawed sort of immor immortality. Sure, their cells don't age, and they die far less easily, so dead apostle, not truly immortal, still needs sustenance to function. Yeah. It's like an ever-burning furnace. Without a regular supply of energy, it'll waste away. Or they'll waste away. All living things absorb nutrients from their food to survive, right? It's the same thing here. The only difference is that, as long as vampires can feed on blood, they won't die a natural death. You see, then apostles and their kind drink blood because they need it in order to survive. <laughs> true, <laughs> true answer is we do it because it's cool. <laughs> Since they were born human, they aren't equipped to maintain an immortal body. The, the older and stronger a vampire gets, the more its genes begin to buckle under the strain of that growth. If it doesn't grow more powerful, it'll break down. 
On the other hand, if it, become, if it becomes too powerful, its body won't be able to maintain its own integrity. Okay, so you need to find like that Goldilocks zone. If not, you're just gonna waste away no matter what. So, what are they to do? It's simple, really. They seek out those unlike themselves who are still capable of maintaining their own bodily integrity. Then, the vampire takes from them that which they've lost. It's like how humans enjoy having organic compounds in their diet. Vampires drink human blood, from which they obtain normal genetic information and, uh, and energy. I guess you could say it's like drawing calories from the soul. Hmm. In other words, they secure their own form uh, their own form by absorbing genetic information from healthy humans through blood. Okay, so genetic information. Huh, okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Drinking blood isn't just a means of feeding and accumulating power. It's essential to their continued existence. Basically saying, you, you, you just need, you just, you have to survive off blood if you're a dead apostle. Because if you don't, you'll just die no matter what. Either from your genetic code basically just breaking down, or you get too powerful and your body just can't handle that much strength and growth, and you just basically crumble, you, just basically, you basically just implode. <laughs> dead apostle, not truly really human yet, working for a prey, and then humans are prey, supply to master, drinks blood, drinks blood. Supply to master. Okay. The explanation makes my head spin with both its complexity and length. I'm not following this at all, but Arcwade carries right along. Next, you mention how vampires can paralyze people with a glare. That's a type of mystic eye. The eye makes for a convenient and powerful magic circuit, so there's quite a few vampires with mystic eyes. It's probably easiest to understand if you think of it as a way to direct magical energy in one direction, like um, a laser beam coming out of the eyes, something like that. <laughs> Vampires can shoot lasers from their eyes? Arkaway said, said something so outrageous, I can't help but jump up from my seat. <laughs> what? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know who what vampire can do that? Dio from part one. <laughs> if you remember that, Dio from part one, when he turned himself to a vampire, he actually was able to shoot fucking lasers from his eyes. I don't think there is a, a, a there are, what I don't think there are actually any vampires with an ability quite that wild. I'm just trying to give you a good picture to work with. Dio, Dio has it. Dio Brando, Part One, Phantom Blood. Whew, I'm relieved, and also a little disappointed. What are these mystic eyes anyway? They're a kind of special, uh, they're a special kind of eyes. They make it possible to cast a single action spell by manipulating the eye's magic circuit. Think of it like a special technique. Humans uh, have all kinds of different swords, uh, 
swordsmanship stalled, right? It's the same as that. We got rainbow, jewel, golden, ruby slash sapphire, common varieties, binding, compulsion, chaos, flame, illusion, and misfortune. Generally speaking, any dead apostle should be able to use mystic eyes, though there are many different types. That said, uh, even if they train a lot, uh, even if they train, a lot of it comes down to the innate talent and aptitude of the vampire. Most vampires have mystic eyes of enchantment. It's a basic type of mystic eye, but still effective. Honestly, any other variety probably wouldn't be that useful for a vampire anyway. It's not as easy as the vampire charming whoever they look at. The victim has to meet their gaze as well. There are powerful vampires with mystic eyes that allow them to penetrate the target's mind and enforce their will upon them. But that's pretty rare as far as that apostle goes. Huh. That sounds like hypnosis or brainwashing. You go up to someone and tell them they forgot everything they saw. With a power like that, you could cover up any murder, even if there were witnesses at the scene. So, complicated mechanics aside, it's bad to look a vampire in the eye. Oh, now you're catching on. Yeah, when you're fighting a van when you're fighting vampires, you should try to stay aware of the entire situation instead of staring your opponent down. Making direct eye contact is a good way to get killed. Next, turning into mist. Mist form. This can also be divided into two categories. High level vaporizes, disperses. A high-level vampire might actually be able to dissipate its body into small particles. However, there are only a few dead apostles who can pull this off over long periods and distances. Clone. Low-level vampires might, uh, might be said to disappear in a puff of smoke, but I think your country calls them Kagemusha. Particularly careful vampires might create a body double and grant it some of its consciousness. When the double has served its purpose, the magical energy supply is cut and it'll fizzle out into a bunch of dust. This makes it look like it's turning into mist. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's just dumb. He's like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. She actually knows about Kagemusha. She might be a vampire from some foreign country, but she's surprisingly knowledgeable about Japanese culture. Beast form. Beast <laughs> The idea that vampires change into wolves, or any other animals for that matter, is a byproduct of the way vampires use familiars to heal their damaged bodies. Familiar, little wolf, or little fox. The longer a vampire lives, 
the harder it becomes for them to supplement their decaying body with mere human blood. That's why they'll seek out some powerful beast and take it into their being. Oh, like the boy, um, Nero. Okay. Uh, these beasts can be expelled from the body in their, in their previous form. This can make it look like a vampire just turned into a wolf or something. Yeah, Nero had the whole fucking zoo on <laughs>。A typical dead apostle will absorb just one beast or so to keep its body in good shape. But that's it. Absorbing too many can cause the, uh, the vampire sense of self to become clouded by the animals instead. One, uh, only one dead apostle has been known to use multiple beasts as his familiars. He's long gone though. Okay, so he is Nero dead in this in this timeline? Hmm, so that's basically it. It's just a rough outline based on the assumptions you already had, but I hope that clears up. Uh, I hope that clears things up a bit for you. Well, I think that does clear up some stuff for me. So that's where we're gonna end off today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Let me save a little bit more here. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy. And if you did, like, comment, and subscribe. It has been your boy White Album. I will see you guys next time with some more Sukihime. Take care.